Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can create your own smart accessories that can be embedded with hand keyed animations and also physics simulations. This provides you with a great deal of convenience and flexibility when adding accessories to your characters in various scenarios. Our first example is going to be animating this gun which you can find in the Policeman Uniforms and Gear content pack. In the scene manager, we can see that it's made up of a number of different components, including a bullet shell and muzzle particle effect, which you can see emits smoke when we enable it. Let's animate the gun slide at the top first, by entering into the Edit Animation Layer tool with it selected. I'll go to the frame where the shot begins and hit reset to give ourselves an initial keyframe. Then at the extent of the recoil, I'll slide it back making sure to use the local axis for movement. Hit W to toggle between local and world axes. After that, hit reset at a future frame to return it back to its default position. To further refine this, we can open up the curve editor and use a more jerky preset to give us a more abrupt recoil on the second keyframe. and then a damping one on the third to give a more dynamic effect. We can then extend the clip for as many shots as we want, and copy and paste those same keyframes at the proper intervals to coincide with the second and third shot animations. After that, we'll want to animate the smoke particle effect as well. At the frame of the first shot, Let's set emit to on with a higher emit rate, and then toggle it off again a few frames later. You can see the emit length in its dedicated timeline track. At first, we don't see smoke at the first couple of shots, so we can increase the emit rate and quota so that more smoke comes out of each shot. We can further complement this by adding a muzzle flash particle effect, which can be found in the Battleground Fort and Village pack. We can add this to our pistol, and then align its position by zeroing out the transform values and subsequently tweaking the position of the dummy. We can also adjust its size to be more suitable to our handgun, and further refine the position. We obviously don't want it to be constantly emitting like a machine gun, so we need to go through a similar process as we did with the smoke, and set the emit keyframes to the proper timing. Again, this will coincide with the beginning of each shot for a few frames, and you can copy and paste to the beginning of each shot. For a further complementary effect, we can add a high intensity point light to each shot as well. Again, we want to attach it to the muzzle area of the gun first, and adjust its color to be a bit more of a yellowish hue. We can then keyframe its timing by toggling its active status, similar to the emit status in the particle effects. Once we copy-paste like we did before, we now have a cool sequence with active lighting. If your lighting doesn't activate each time, ensure that you are in by-frame playback mode in the timeline to allow for more accurate calculation during playback. Finally, we can also animate the spent bullet shells as well. Here we want to again use the Edit Animation Layer tool, and in the middle of our first shot, use Reset to add our initial keyframe. Then just add two more position keyframes to animate the shell popping out and falling to the ground. We can also add some rotation values here so it doesn't look so uniform. 
As the shell hits the ground, we could add a whole bunch of physics stuff here, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to toggle off visibility. We can extend the clip once again and copy paste our position and visibility keyframes accordingly. This will basically mean that the same shell will reappear at its origin and repeat the animated process of falling. You can add further variations to the path of each shot to make it more random. Now we can save all that hard work into an animated smart accessory. With our character model selected, I can right click on the motion clip and select collection range which will give us that selected range in the Collect Clip track. Then, right-click in that track and add Motion Plus to Library. An important thing to note here, though, is that when saving this iMotion Plus, it will make reference to the original gun accessory file from the Policeman Uniforms and Gear Pack where it comes from. As a result, if we try to apply it to a new character now, we won't see a muzzle flash, smoke, or light that we added. To get around this, we need to save our modified pistol with all the bells and whistles attached as a custom accessory. So let's go ahead and save it to our custom folder in the accessory category. Then we need to right click and drag that new gun in to replace the old one. And repeat the motion saving process. Now when we apply the newly saved Motion Plus, we'll get the correct result. Okay, for our next example, let's look at saving physics simulation results to our accessory motion. Here I'm going to use physics to have a bag swing naturally from this character's hand. For our first step, let's bring our bag into the scene, along with a sphere that we're going to use as a dummy later, and scale it down to hand size. Let's attach the bag to the sphere and open the handle to the center of the ball where we want our future bag swing to focus. I'll then decrease the opacity of the dummy so we can see the handle better and ensure that rigid body physics are enabled. You can do this in project settings or from the toolbar. Next, with the ball selected, I'm going to activate its physics and set the type to kinematic, which allows it to move along with the hand. The bag will be assigned as dynamic, so it will be free to swing along as it follows the movement of the dummy. For most accurate results, you'll want to use a self mesh here. Next, we want to add a generic physics constraint to the bag, which will ensure that it is constrained to the dummy at that point while the rest of the bag is free to swing around. Ensure the bag is the parent while the dummy is the target. We want to ensure that our constraint dummy is focused on the handle of the bag where it will be swinging from. To test the initial constraint result, you can use the Prop Puppet tool. But as you can see, we won't have any rotation yet since we need to set the constraint parameters. So with the constraint selected, we can go into the limit section and enable some rotation values for the X and Y axes. We want to keep these fairly low unless we want the bag to swing around like crazy. It's important here to enable soft limit so that the movement is not too sharp when the bag hits the rotation limit. Now when we test it out, we get a successful result, so we can proceed to attach our dummy to the hand and adjust the position accordingly. We can also use the Edit Motion Layer tool to tweak the hand gesture position to grasp the bag handle. You can see upon our initial playback that the movement still looks too stiff, so let's once again go into our constraint parameters and adjust the stiffness and damping values to allow for a more natural swing result. Another thing we can do to improve the result are the physics properties of the bag itself. 
In this case, giving it a bit more mass and upping the damping value will soften the sway of the bag further. If you encounter a result where the bag mesh is penetrating the character's leg, be sure to go into collision shape with your character selected and enable a collision shape for the thigh and calf. To save resources, we can disable the head one. Ensure that the margin values are also not too big for more accurate results. If the bounce is too large, you can tweak the positioning of the arm to have it further away from the body using the Edit Motion Layer tool. Now we have a decent result. When playing back with physics enabled, a new clip will be recorded each time to the physics object. If you're happy with the recorded result, be sure to disable the physics on your objects so further playbacks don't re-simulate and overwrite this clip. Once we're happy, we can repeat the same process and save the Motion Plus file. Since our bag accessory didn't originally include the ball dummy, we need to save its mesh as well. After that, we can reapply the motion to any other character and get the same physics simulated result. That's it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.